Uh, in response to Senator Duckworth, you said multiple times uh, you will follow the law. Under every circumstance, you will follow the law. I appreciate that commitment. Um, I want to go back and revisit the exchange you had with Senator Kim. Because one component of the law, you have said, and I'm glad to hear it, that, that under your leadership, America will beat China back to the moon. That's important. Uh, but the law is clear beyond simply going to the moon. That's part of it, that, that going to the moon shall be a stepping stone for further exploration of Mars. Uh, the ultimate objective is Mars, but going to the moon is critical. The law also specifies explicitly the administrator shall, and when legislation uses the word shall, it denotes a mandatory obligation. The administrator shall establish a program to develop a sustained human presence in cislunar space or on the moon. With respect to Senator Kim, you were reluctant to commit on a sustained human presence on the moon. Could you clarify your view on that to this committee? Well, uh, Senator, as a space enthusiast, I'd like nothing more, as, as I've said before, to see a number of lunar outposts and Mars outposts and for us to even progress farther out into our solar system. If we, have, if we are in an unlimited budgetary environment, we can ha maintain an ongoing presence on the lunar surface. I am more than supportive of it. I think it's imperative that we have to get back to the moon first as quickly as we possibly can, figure out again the scientific, economic, national security value to being there, which I am very hopeful that we are going to find in order to support the ongoing presence on the lunar surface, sir. So the statute is written in the disjunctive. It gives the choice of either the surface of the moon or cis cislunar uh, orbit. Uh, what is your view on the Gateway Project? Senator, that's an area that if I'm confirmed, I would, again, would love to roll up my sleeves and get uh, further understand uh, what's working right, what are the opportunities the Gateway presents to us, uh, and where are some of the challenges? Because I think the Gateway is a component of many programs that are over budget and behind uh, schedule, sir. So you're describing Gateway as over budget and behind schedule. I will say there's a long history in NASA of, of administrations coming in and canceling programs and causing massive delays uh, Barack Obama did that with the Constellation, and, and NASA struggled for years as a consequence. Um, as administrator, are you going to cancel the Gateway program? Senator, I, I, have, I have no intention as of now to say that I would cancel any program. I, I need to, if I'm confirmed, get in the job and understand where, where, things, where things are at. I want to assure you and this committee that I want to see America win and succeed and lead in space, whether that be the moon, Mars, low Earth orbit, and beyond. I do not want to see us come in second place, and I certainly don't want to see the right-hand side of that poster you put up, sir. So I want to ask you again, because you've said you'll follow the law, are you committed to a sustained human presence in cislunar space or, or on the moon? And that is federal statute. Senator, if that is the law, then I'm committed to it. Okay. All right, let's talk LEO. The International Space Station is managed at a Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. NASA is planning to retire the ISS by 2030, replacing it with one or more commercially developed space stations funded partially by NASA and partially by outside customers. Unfortunately, both NASA and commercial replacements are behind schedule. Do you agree that we cannot have a gap period between the ISS and its successor when there would be zero human U.S. presence in low Earth orbit. I do agree, Senator. We cannot cede low Earth orbit to the Chinese. Now, I would note in the first Trump administration, there were those in the administration pushing to deorbit the International Space Station prematurely. Given that we've invested over $100 billion in the station, I think that would be profoundly foolish to give up on that investment as long as it is safe to continue using it. After the administration floated this idea multiple times, the United States Senate passed legislation that I authored, 100 to nothing. Every Republican and every senator came through committing that we would maintain the International Space Station at least until 2030, as long as, as it is safe and scientifically feasible. Will you commit to follow the law and not deorbit the space station before 2030? 
Senator, I will absolutely commit to follow the law, and I think we need to maximize the return that taxpayers have invested in that, in that orbital laboratory, use every bit of time we have to crack the code on the space economy, and give commercial LEO destinations a fighting chance when they inevitably take over, sir. Ms. Trustee, it's been two years since the FCC lost general auction authority, and three years since the last meaningful auction of Spectrum. The Spectrum Pipeline Act, which I introduced with Leader Thune and with Senator Blackburn last year, would restore the FCC's auction authority and would establish a clear pipeline of mid-band spectrum for commercial use. Ms. Trustee, should Congress restore the FCC's general auction authority with a clear pipeline of mid-band spectrum? Yes, Senator, and to the extent it, it accommodates both our economic and national security interests, and I believe it can. So what would be the benefits of restoring the auction authority with a clear pipeline of mid-band spectrum? Thank you, Senator. I, I think there would be tremendous economic benefits, job creation, uh, workforce productivity, the expansion of broadband services across the country. I also think it's foundational to our leadership internationally on global technologies. Uh, as you know, the Department of Defense has been highly resistant to giving up any spectrum. And for a long time, they have given a parade of horribles uh, as to what would occur if any spectrum moved to the commercial, uh, commercial sector. I find that parade of horribles highly incredible and the result of bureaucratic intransigence. It's an intransigence that began when General Milley was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs and DOD chose a, stat, a strategy of absolutely resisting and refusing to work on freeing up spectrum. I recently had a classified briefing, uh, of which you're aware, where I asked two questions to the senior leadership at DOD and also senior leadership of the Intelligence Committee. The first question I asked was over 50 countries across the planet have moved substantial portions of the spectrum in question to the commercial sector and they're being used presently for commercial purposes. Is it DOD's position that our Navy does not operate in the Pacific, that we can only defend Topeka, Kansas, and the rest of the world, our, our military is unable to defend the United States? Uh, you have unique expertise, having worked both on the Commerce Committee and the Senate Armed Services Committee. In your opinion, are we able to defend ourselves across the globe, even in areas where other countries have moved significant portions of spectrum to be available for the commercial sector? Senator, I appreciate this question. So I'll say I'm not privy to all of DOD's spectrum assets and capabilities, but I do think there's an opportunity to move forward on spectrum policy that protects both our national security and advances our economic interests. And I think what that really requires is, like you said, having classified briefings or briefings in the public where multiple stakeholder perspectives are represented to challenge uh, positions on various matters. I think it promotes transparency and it ensures, I think, there's uh, more cohesion on spectrum matters going forward. The second question that I asked DOD that they had a totally insufficient answer to was what would be the national security consequences, and I would add the economic security consequences, if America loses the race for 6G and the global telecom architecture is built by Huawei and controlled by the Chinese com communists and every active duty serviceman and woman who has their own cell phone is now communicating over Chinese telecom uh, infrastructure. In your judgment, what would be the economic interest and the national security interest if that occurred, if we lose the race to 6G? Senator, I think, I hope we could all agree that it would be uh, devastating to our economic and national security interests if we had to be reliant on Chinese technologies. Senator Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, glad I made it back. Ms. Trustee, you, 